Kuzuzangpo, Bhutan e-learning project welcomes you all to this lesson. I am Sushmika Tamang and this is a physics lesson for key stage 5 that is classes 11 and 12. Today's lesson is the continuation of last lesson that is on electromagnetic induction. Therefore, today's topic is also electromagnetic induction part 3. We are going to fulfill following objectives in today's lessons. Explain self-induction, explain mutual induction, give applications of electromagnetic inductions. You can see in the diagram when the switch here is on, current starts to flow. So current will start to grow. So when current starts to increase, then there will be flux induced here, which will induce EMF in this coil. So that induced EMF will oppose the source EMF. So this is called self-induction or inertia of current. When you now open the key, the current will start to decrease. So when current starts to decrease, the field lines will also start to decay. And this will further induce EMF in the coil, which will this time oppose the decrease of the current. So this is also called self-induction. So the phenomena of electromagnetic induction in which on changing the current in the coil, an opposing induced EMF is set up in that very coil is called self-induction. In this diagram, you can see an inductor is connected to a rheostat, which is used to vary the resistance, and then it is connected to a external voltage. Now, when you let the current flow through the circuit, there will be flux linked through the coil. So this flux is directly proportional to the current. So phi V is directly proportional to I. Now since there are n number of turns, the flux will be linked with all the n turns. So that is why the total flux, which is called flux linkage, is represented by n phi B. And that is directly proportional to the current flowing through in the circuit. Now to remove the proportionality sign, you have to have an equal to sign and then to do that, you need to have a constant and here the constant is L. This L is called coefficient of self-induction or also it is called self-inductance. So self-inductance also has a unit which is called Henry represented by capital H. Now, you know from this formula, you can have another unit for self-inductance. So if you take the current to the other side, then you will have flux over current. So the other unit would be Weber, which is the unit for flux over current. Current unit is ampere. So the other unit would be Weber per ampere. We can have now definition of self-inductance from this equation. Suppose if the current flowing in the circuit is 1 ampere, then what happens to this equation? So here your I will be replaced by 1, so then we will have N phi B is equal to L. So self-inductance therefore it can be defined as the measure of flux linkage produced by the coil when unit current is passed through the coil. We can define self-inductance in terms of induced EMF as well. So for that, what we have to do is we'll take the last equation and then we will differentiate it with, it with respect to time. So when we differentiate, we have d by dt n d phi b equal to d by dt l i. So from here, if we take out n and then differentiate flux, we have this. And here l is a constant, so you differentiate current 
with respect to time. So here, what is this? If you remember from the last lesson, this is law of Faraday or Faraday's law. So from here we have n d phi by dt is equal to minus e. You remember what minus is? Yes, it is the representation of Lenz law is equal to L d i by d t. Now from here, if in the circuit current is changing at the rate of 1 ampere per second, what happens? L times 1 will just give you L. So what we have is minus E is equal to L. So from here we can define self-inductance as EMF induced in the coil when current changes at the rate of 1 ampere per second. Next thing that we are going to learn is mutual induction. <coughs> so when the term mutual comes, there should be something added to the single circuit. So here you can see there are two coils. So in the first coil, AC current is flowing, right? AC current is flowing through the first coil, first inductor you can also say that. So when current flows through this coil, there is flux induced in the coil. So this flux is linked with the other coil close to it. So the first coil usually we call this primary coil and the second coil we call it secondary. So when the flux changes in the primary coil or in the first coil, since it is linked with the secondary coil, the flux changes there too. So as the flux changes, there will be induced current, which is the Faraday's law. So because of that induced current, the bulb glows. This process actually is called mutual induction. So mutual induction is the phenomena according to which an opposing EMF is produced in a coil as a result of change in current or magnetic flux linked with the neighboring coil. Okay, so I hope you have got the idea now. Just like self-inductance, we have mutual inductance. So now, this time, when current I1, which is the current in the primary coil, flows through the primary coil, then phi2 is the magnetic flux linked in the secondary coil. So flux linked in the secondary coil is directly proportional to the current flowing in the primary coil. So phi2 is directly proportional to I1. Now you should know the next step. Since there are N2, we will be more specific because there are two coils. Since there are N2 turns in the secondary, so the flux linkage will be N2 phi2. That is directly proportional to I1. Okay. Now, to remove the proportionality, we have to introduce a constant. So, constant this time is M. Now, you can guess what M is. Yes, M is mutual inductance, also called coefficient of mutual induction. From here, you can actually define mutual inductance if you take current in the primary coil to be 1 ampere. So if current in the primary coil is 1 ampere, we will have N2 phi2 is equal to M. So from here, you can define mutual inductance as the measure of flux linkage. N2 phi2 is the flux linkage. In the secondary coil, when unit current is passed through the primary coil. Now, we will again define mutual inductance in terms of induced EMF. So we take the equation N2 phi2 is equal to mi1. What is the step? Yes, we have to differentiate this equation 1 with respect to time. So when we differentiate, we will have N2 d phi2 over dt is equal to m di1 over dt. Now, again, what is this? By Faraday's law, 
this is emf induced where this time it is in the secondary coil so we will represent it by e2 so minus e2 is equal to m d i 1 by d t so using this equation we can actually define mutual inductance so how did we do in case of self inductance we do the same here so d i by d t suppose the current in the primary coil is changing at the rate of 1 ampere per second then d i by d t will be equal to 1 ampere per second so then this equation becomes minus e2 is equal to m times 1 which is m so from here we can again define mutual inductance as follows so mutual inductance is defined as emf induced in the secondary coil e2 when current changes at the rate of 1 ampere per second in the primary coil applications of electromagnetic induction there are lots of applications of electromagnetic induction the first one that we are going to learn today is a transformer a transformer is a device for increasing or decreasing an AC voltage it works on the principle of mutual induction whenever you need to charge your phone what do you do typically 3 volt to 9 volt is required to energize the battery of your phone you take a mobile charger and plug it into the socket what does it have it has a step down transformer which reduces 220 volt AC from the socket to around 9 volt which is required by your phone Picture tube in television set needs about 15,000 volt to accelerate the electron beam and transformer is used to obtain this high voltage from 220 to 240 volt at a wall socket. Transmission of electricity from powerhouse to our house requires both step up and step down transformers. We will learn more about transformer from this video. A transformer consists of primary and secondary coils insulated from each other wound around a soft iron core. To minimize eddy current, laminated iron core is used. The AC input is applied across the primary coil. A continuous varying current in the primary coil produces a varying magnetic flux in the primary coil which is linked to the secondary coil. Hence, an induced EMF is produced in the secondary coil. Principle of a transformer Transformer is an electrical device used to convert low alternating voltage into high alternating voltage and vice versa. It transfers electrical power from one circuit to another. Transformer is based on the principle of electromagnetic induction. Let EP and ES be the induced EMF in the primary and the secondary coils respectively and NP and NS be the number of turns in the primary and the secondary respectively. Since same flux links with the primary and the secondary, the EMF induced per turn of the two coils must be the same. That is EP over NP is equal to ES over NS or ES by EP is equal to NS by NP. This is equation 1. For an ideal transformer, input power is equal to output power. Therefore, EP times IP is equal to ES times IS, where IP and IS are currents in the primary and the secondary coils. 
that is ES over EP is equal to IP over IS and this is equation 2. From equations 1 and 2 ES over EP is equal to NS over NP is equal to IP over IS is equal to K where K is called transformer ratio. For step up transformer K is greater than 1 and for step down transformer K is less than 1. In a step-up transformer, ES is greater than EP, that implies that IS is less than IP. Thus, a step-up transformer increases the voltage by decreasing the current, which is in accordance with the law of conservation of energy. A step-down transformer decreases the voltage by increasing the current. Efficiency of a transformer Efficiency of a transformer is defined as the ratio of output power to the input power, which is represented mathematically by eta is equal to output power over input power is equal to ES over EP times IS over IP. The efficiency eta is equal to 1 only for an ideal transformer where there is no power loss. But practically, there are numerous factors leading to energy loss in a transformer and hence the efficiency is always less than 1. Let's see whether you can answer this question or not. So there are two transformer, one here another one here. Study the pictures carefully and tell me which one is step up and which one is step down. Yes, the first one is step down. You can see the number of turns here. This one is primary because it is connected to AC source. So number of turns in the primary is more and number of turns in the secondary is less. And that happens in step down. Here you can see number of turns in the primary is less and number of turns in the secondary is more. When does that happen? It happens in step up transformer. The second application of electromagnetic induction is AC generator. AC generator is a device that converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. So this is the sketch of AC generator. So this is a shaft. If you rotate this shaft, you are applying mechanical energy. So when you do that, the coil will be rotating and as it rotates, the flux through the coil, which is given by north and south pole of this magnet, will change. And by Faraday's law, change in the magnetic flux through the coil induces current. And here it is alternating current. So now the induced current needs to have a direction. So to get the direction of the induced current, we need to know Fleming's right hand rule. So Fleming's right hand rule, you have to use your right hand rule to get the direction of the induced current. So you have to make the three fingers, the thumb, index finger and the middle finger perpendicular to one another and the Thumb represents the direction of the motion of the conductor. The index finger represents the direction of the magnetic field. And the middle finger will give you the direction of the current induced. So you have to use this rule to get the direction of the current induced. So as you can see here, you have a rectangular coil which is... Uh, arm CD is moving upward so which means the motion of the conductor is up okay which is represented by thumb and then the magnetic field is from north to south so index finger represents the direction of the magnetic field from north 
to south. So the current induced in the coil will be represented by the direction of the current will be represented by the middle finger. So which means current will move from D to C. This from D here to C. So with this we will learn more about AC generator from this video. An AC generator is an electric generator that converts mechanical energy into electrical energy in the form of an alternating current or alternating EMF. Working principle of an AC generator. An AC generator works on the principle of electromagnetic induction. In electromagnetic induction, when there is a relative motion between a coil and a magnetic field, an electric current or EMF is induced in the coil. Parts of an AC generator. An AC generator has an armature A, B, C, D. It's a rectangular coil with many turns wound around a soft iron core. A shaft, it can be rotated rapidly. A field magnet, it may be a strong permanent magnet with concave poles. Two slip rings, S1 and S2. These are connected to the armature and thus rotates with it. Two brushes, B1 and B2. They provide electrical contact with the slip rings and a load, which may be a galvanometer, as shown. Working of an AC generator. When the armature rotates between the poles of the field magnet, the magnetic flux linked with the armature changes continuously. As a result, an EMF is induced in the armature. This in turn produces an electric current through the armature and the galvanometer and through the slip rings and the brushes. Note that the galvanometer needle swings between the negative and the positive values. This means an alternating current is flowing through the galvanometer. Direction of induced current. Initially, the armature ABCD is vertical with its arm AB up and CD down. The direction of the magnetic field is from left to right. As the armature undergoes a half rotation clockwise, arm AB moves down while arm CD moves up. According to Fleming's right hand rule, the current will flow in the direction D C B A. So the current will flow from B1 to B2 through the galvanometer. Now during the next half rotation arm AB moves up while arm CD moves down. Again by Fleming's right hand rule current will flow in the direction A B C D that is from B2 to B1 through the galvanometer. Thus the induced current changes the direction every half rotation. Graphical representation of induced EMF. Suppose the armature takes T seconds to complete one rotation clockwise. At time t equal to 0 second, the armature ABCD is vertical with arm AB up and arm CD down. At this position, when the armature rotates, the rate of change of magnetic flux is momentarily 0. Hence, the induced EMF at this position is 0. During the first quarter rotation, the induced EMF increases then at time t by 4 seconds, the armature becomes horizontal. At this position, the rate of change of magnetic flux momentarily attains the maximum value. 
Therefore, the induced EMF at this position is maximum. During the second quarter rotation, the induced EMF decreases. Then at time t by 2 seconds, the armature again becomes vertical and therefore the induced EMF is zero. During the third quarter rotation, the induced EMF increases but has an opposite polarity as compared to the first half rotation. At this time, t by 4 seconds, the induced EMF attains its maximum negative value. During the fourth quarter rotation, the induced EMF decreases and becomes zero momentarily at time t seconds as the armature is vertical once again. So the magnitude of the induced EMF is sinusoidal. Okay, so you have seen the EMF curve, which is sinusoidal in the video. So now we will find the expression of the EMF induced in AC generator. So if you remember the flux linked through the coil, rectangular coil, is given by phi b is equal to b a cos theta. And this one is from the first lesson, first part of our lesson, part one. So since there are n number of turns, the total flux linkage will be n phi b is equal to n b a cos theta. Now, omega, if we take it as angular velocity of the rectangular coil, then omega can be written as theta by t. So this is by application of simple formula of uh, speed, velocity, uh, velocity, distance and time. Okay, so here omega is the velocity, theta is the displacement, t is the time. So speed is equal to distance over time. Only thing is here we are taking angular. So angular displacement, angular velocity. So if you make displacement the subject, we'll have theta represented as omega t. So now we will replace omega t here. In place of theta, we're going to write omega t. So what do we get? N phi b is equal to N b a cos omega t. Now we will differentiate this equation 1 with, re with respect to time. So when we differentiate, we get this. And you know what this is. It will be equal to minus e by Faraday's law. And here n is a constant and then magnetic field is also constant, area of the coil is constant, so you just have to differentiate cos omega t. So this one will be equal to minus e. Differentiation of cos omega t is minus sin omega t and differentiation of omega t is just omega. So this is what we get. Now minus and minus get cancelled, we have the final expression of uh, alternating EMF as N B A omega sine omega T. So this is the expression for alternating EMF. Let's visualize the rotation from the video. So this north and south represents the two pole, this red frame represents the rectangular coil at different position. So in the first position it is perpendicular to the magnetic field. So when it is perpendicular to the magnetic field in this position you can see here your EMF is zero. So when it rotates and takes this position when it is parallel to the magnetic field your EMF is maximum right and then again perpendicular this is one complete rotation so at this position again minimum now in opposite position maximum in opposite direction and finally back to zero so from this we can actually get uh, get peak uh, alternating EMF so when do you see peak here when theta is 90 when theta is 270. So at this position, we get the peak value of EMF. So we will substitute 
in the equation theta by 90 degree. So if we replace theta by 90 degree, we get EMF is equal to NBA omega. And this is represented by E naught, which is actually the maximum EMF. So we get maximum EMF at two position during one complete rotation and also two minimum. You can see at 0 and 360, your EMF is minimum. Now let's see whether you all can design your own generator or not that will give maximum induced EMF. So you have a fixed length of wire and you need to design a generator. You have only two options. You use either one turn coil or two turn coil. Which option should you choose so that your generator will produce the greatest peak EMF for a given frequency and magnetic field strength? So I have already given you the formula for peak EMF which is equal to NBA omega. So for a given length of wire, would you make one turn coil or two turn coil to have maximum EMF? Now logically looking at this equation, if you take two turns, then N will be two, which will give you maximum EMF. That sounds logical, correct, right? Now let's go further. Let's assume that the length of the wire you are provided with is 16 meter. And let us take first case with one turn. And let's do one more assumption. That is, let's make the coil a square. So square will have side of 4 meter, which means area will be 4 times 4, which is 16 meter square. Now for the assumption, let us make magnetic field to be 1 tesla, angular velocity as 1 radian per second. Now substituting all this, I'll get number of turn is 1, magnetic field is 1, area is 16 and omega is 1 so this will give me 16 volts so with one turn I am getting EMF as 16 volts let's take two turns so two turns means you will have two squares each of length 2 meter or side 2 meter so therefore n here is 2 area is 4 meter square so this will give me EMF or peak EMF as 2 times 1 times 4 times 1 which is 8 volt. So which one is better? It is always better to have one turn with bigger area than more turns with smaller area. So the answer is one turn coil. I hope it is clear. Okay, with that, we have come to the end of our lesson. Let's see what we have learned today. So we studied or we understood self-induction, mutual induction, applications of electromagnetic induction. Now, I have few questions for you all to solve as homework. The first one, a transformer has 500 turns in its primary coil and 1000 turns in its secondary winding. The voltage in the primary is 200 volt and the load in the secondary coil is 100 ohm. Calculate the current in the primary coil assuming the transformer to be ideal. Next question. A 12 Henry inductor carries a current of 2 ampere. At what rate must the current be changed to produce a 60 volt EMF in the inductor? And the third one. Coil 1 has L1 equal to 25 millihenry and N1 equal to 100 turns. Coil 2 has L2 equal to 40 millihenry and N2 equal to 200 turns. The coils are fixed in place. Their mutual inductance M is 3 millihenry. A 6 milliampere current in coil 1 is changing at the rate of 4 ampere per second. So that makes it a primary coil. A. What magnetic flux phi 1 to links coil 1? So you are asked to find self-induced flux. 
What self-induced EMF appears in that coil? C. What magnetic flux phi to 1 links coil to? And D. What mutually induced EMF appears in that coil? So with this we have come to the end of our lesson. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you for attending this lesson. See you all in my next class. Thank you.